All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about virtual cameras and using them to add real handheld camera motion to our 3D scenes. This is pretty exciting. Since my last video on the subject, I've gotten a lot of questions on how to get this all set up. And unfortunately, since then, the process has kind of become outdated. But today I actually have a completely new method for getting that handheld camera motion. The people at Glassbox reached out to me for a live demo of their new software Dragonfly, which is a plugin for Unreal Engine 5 and Maya, and after about an hour, I was pretty intrigued by what they had cooking here. But overall, it seems like this program can take the VCAM process and make it feel more like shooting on a live set. I had to go check out the trial. This isn't officially sponsored or anything, this is just my first impressions of the Dragonfly plugin. Let's check it out. So I hopped on over to the Glassbox website and downloaded the plugin. This is pretty easy to download and get set up. And after that, to learn how this program worked for myself, I made a bunch of test levels. I have this sort of white and gray with neon theme going on, so here's how that came together. For our test shots, like with a lot of projects, we're using Mixmo characters and Mixmo animations. I used this neon material I put together here for the handheld props and compiled a bunch of animations into a little demo scene I put together. We ultimately come up with six shots. Here's the first five. For the last shot, I did a little bit extra looking up some references of Tron and posing a character accordingly. And then back in Unreal Engine, I kitbashed together a speeder bike model to fly along the track. So yeah, with all this prepared, now it's time to actually get into my first impressions of Dragonfly. Okay, here it is. This is what the Dragonfly overlay looks like. In the center here is the viewport. On the left is where we connect to the companion app. And over here on the right is where all the camera controls are. So there's a lot going on here, and fortunately it's intuitive to learn. The best way to get into it was just by diving in. So we're gonna hop over to the companion app, set up some joysticks, and start getting some shots. So this guy here is the app we're looking for, the Dragonfly Companion. At first I didn't know how to move the camera at all, and that's because we set up our own controls. We do that by dragging out our own joysticks from the settings here, and then back on the desktop, we can use the joysticks binding tab to make the joysticks move our camera around. So that's kind of cool. You can assign a bunch of different functions to these buttons, but we're just keeping it simple for now. For my first official test, we're using that hover bike level to test out the platform feature. What this does is it allows us to essentially stick our camera to a moving object so we can track it accurately while still having that handheld look. So then I was able to get my first test shot, and I don't think there's any better review than my first impression reaction to all this. Oh, come on now. Oh, that's working. Look at this! That's totally working, you just had to select the static mesh. Holy shit, this is neat. I felt like I discovered fire, so I started getting some shots. And again, this is all done from within the companion app. It's just like shooting a video on your phone. Once the shot is recorded, you're able to review and replay it, which also got me pretty excited. We'll cut back to me live. There it is. And now, I can review the shot. <laughs> This is pretty cool, guys. And that's with no smoothing. I should be able to now... Yep. I can adjust the smoothing on that shot. So let's just see what 0 0.5 looks like. And we'll also smooth the rotation a little bit. So that's a much more smooth shot. Turn that way down, because I actually like the handheld jitter. And you can go right back to getting more shots. God damn. For the sake of time, I cut out a lot of my initial gawking at the plugin. We're gonna move on now to a more complex movement and being able to track it using Dragonfly's time controls. After that, we'll hop into a montage and unveil the final test shots. So, what we can do, if I go sit in my chair again over here, if we take the recording speed, turn it down to 0.5, that should, in theory, half the speed. No, that doubled it. So when we set the recording speed to 2, nice, so that slows it down. Oh, 
That's why we can do multiple takes. <laughs> Let's check it out. How'd that look? Oh, it's actually kind of sick. Hold on. I need to like, this is like weird camera tai chi. So it's forward, diagonal, down. Just with a little bit of that smoothing, I think that really sells it. Holy! Whoa! Oh, too far! Too far! Oh. I got lost. That's rad. That's gonna be cool. Hold on, let's check it. Oh, I can just check it from the iPad. That's even better! <laughs> That's fine. So we desperately need some smoothing. Well, that's magic. Turn that crappy shot into something usable. Well, might as well keep shooting. We crashed! Whoa! <laughs> All right, it lasted a while. You gotta give it some credit. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it, actually. Come on. That is really good. This is going to be so radically useful. We got our test shots, folks. Now, what I don't know is how do we render it back to the main thing. I forget how to do that. So I got to look up tutorials. So uh, after romping around and getting a bunch of shots, all I had to do was render it, like I just mentioned there. And thank God, this was also really easy to do. I was able to just select our shots from the movie render queue after exporting them from the operator main tab. And yeah, with that, here's the reel. Hey, so that's it. First shots with the Dragonfly plugin. What's playing in the background now are the unedited shots back to back. Man, this is really cool stuff. Finding out about new plugins like this gets me going and inspired to keep on making things. Getting this many renders out so quickly would have been a lot harder to do with previous techniques, so I'm really excited to keep working with this. This video was sort of a crash course wild ride through all of this. Uh, let me know if you guys would be interested in a more in-depth showcase of this plugin. I hardly scratched the surface of it today, there's actually a lot going on here that we can mess around with. And a huge thank you to the people over at Glassbox for reaching out and letting me know about this program. I really had a great time using their plugin to get a bunch of cool shots. Virtual camera work is really cool and it's another one of those things in the 3D field that feels like magic to me. And uh, well I think that's it, so thank you guys so much for watching, I hope this video has been able to be of some inspiration, and I'll see you all in the next one.